Archer Aviation. So we have the news around New York and all this infrastructure getting built. But today we're going to share everything we know about it and then I'm going to let you in on my thoughts and where I can see it going and what my projected timeline is. This is a must not miss. So let's get right into it. So we have a cracker today, guys. We have Archer Aviation and United Airlines unveiling their plans to have their air taxi network in New York City. Now, guys, some of you are going to say we've seen it coming because we have discussed this on eVTOL Weekly. But for any of the guys that don't know anything about this, we're going to jump into everything we know about this collaboration with United and how they're going to get this air taxi network up and running. I'm going to give you some of my thoughts. We're going to hear what Adam has had to say. And then I've got a special one for you. I've worked out the exact price per seat people are going to be paying on the midnight. Now, a quick disclaimer. It's not going to be some wishy-washy Uber XL prices, yellow taxi or London black cab prices. I've got the exact dollar amount worked out. And we can work it out for each of the trips. So make sure to stick around for that one. And I am so excited to share that with you. But guys, you've probably seen, we're starting to roll out more and more coverage on the likes of Rocket Lab. Now I have one thing to ask you. If you want us to continue doing daily videos on Archer Aviation, please drop it in the comments. Archer Aviation. Because really, I've said it to many of the guys before, if we don't know people appreciate the daily content on Archer Aviation and we're getting more comments on Rocket Lab, well, of course, we're going to follow the Rocket Lab avenue because people are asking for it. So if you enjoyed this daily Archer Aviation coverage, we are the fastest growing after all. Please drop in the comments. And if you're new here, make sure to bang that subscribe button. We roll out videos on the daily. Yes, some of you are going to completely butcher me and say you've been gone missing for the last two or three days. Guys, we've had a storm here. You can see Reese isn't online yet. And also, in my last live stream, you know I had technical difficulties with the laptop. So that's currently under repair. And I'm using the old faithful. I'm back to the original laptop. So if you see any lagging or you notice the camera's a little bit different... That's exactly why. But anyway, guys, let's get right into this very news and we'll start off with a press release to get everyone up to date. So before we get into the press release, it wouldn't be right to go ahead without bringing any of the new investors that are in Archer Aviation on board. So I'm sure most of you are fully aware who United Airlines are and they have a collaboration with Archer. Now, anyone that doesn't know, Archer are producing an air taxi, an electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle called Midnight. And their aim is to bring hour long journeys in a car down to around five to 15 minute long trips in the air taxi network. These are going to be to the price of the likes of a Uber XL, a yellow taxi in new york or a black cab in london but we will get into it further on in this video how much specifically it will be in dollars for these trips and as well how much archer aviation plans to make on these trips but really getting into united airlines and archer aviation united airlines have an order book of around a billion dollars for 200 midnight aircraft and this is a conditional offer they also have an extension to this where they may purchase 500 million more worth of midnight aircraft but what we're going to get into is all the news they've unveiled about this project in new york and then i'm going to tell you what sort of timeline we can expect on this and where I can see Archer Aviation going following this news. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. 
So Archer unveiled their vision for New York air taxi network, including routes between Manhattan and nearby airports in partnership with United Airlines. Now, I do apologise about this map. I will bring it up further in this video so you can proper see where they're planning on going into because I don't want you squinting your eyes at that. So Archer's vision of the air taxi network in New York would connect Manhattan with nearby airports and that'll be used in the midnight. And they plan to make these hour-long trips into the likes of 5 to 15 minutes long. Really, Archer is going to be working closely with existing infrastructure partners Atlantic Aviation, Signature Aviation, and Skyport's Group ADP, as well as new partners like Modern Aviation and Air Pegasus to develop electrifying aviation assets in the proposed network. Now, guys, it's not all about getting certified and getting these air taxis up and running. We're going to need the likes of Vertiports, unused helipads, and even airfields when we come to all over America. But in the likes of New York, it'll be the likes of vertiports and helipads they'll be using. Now really, what they're going to have to do, they have to not only build the vehicle, get it certified, they don't only have to make your vertiport where the logistics of handling all these passengers they have to make an air traffic system. They have to have the charging network available for these aircraft. I would put it in my head that after these flights, they'd go straight on charge. A bit like your phone after a long journey. So really, Adam Goldstein said, the New York region is home to three of the world's permanent airports and they serve upwards of 150 million passengers annually. Now, why is this figure important? So, yes, there's not going to be 150 million using the likes of midnight per year in New York alone. However, if they scale up and they could even take 10% of this, that is the likes of 15 million passengers in a midnight. Guys, if you think about it, that is about 3.75 million full trips on midnight per year. We're going to work out how much that will actually be further on. But I'm telling you, if we think about it, this is just New York. They're planning on these in San Francisco, Los Angeles. And if you haven't seen my video on the Olympics and what their plan is there and the World Cup and even the 2027 Super Bowl, make sure to check that out. And you're going to want to keep that in your head if you have seen it. Because we spoke about the infrastructure in LA and what their plans are in relation to 2028. But keep that in your mind as we go throughout this video. So then United Airlines came out and said, At United, their focus is on driving innovation, reimagining the future of air travel and enhancing customer experience every step of the journey. And this is a bit like what I said in relation to Joby Aviation partnering with the likes of Virgin Atlantic. Yes, I agree, Archer is next generational when it comes to PR. But if you think about it, they've never actually had to deal with customer experience. And the fact that you have an ally like United Airlines on board, that will be more or less focusing on the customer experience and more or less backing you up on everything you need in relation to not only the service you're running while flying, but also the logistics around these vertiports. I just think having an actual airliner on board, and especially one as predominant as United, is going to be the biggest string to Archer's bow. So the Port Authority is excited to help explore the possibilities of new wave of air mobility in New York and the New Jersey region. So sadly, we had another helicopter crash in the US this week. And this is where some people are going to be quite sceptical about bringing these new electric air taxis into service. 
Guys, these are going to be much safer than the likes of a helicopter. If you think on a helicopter, it takes one component to go wrong and you drop like a stone. Now, the engineers are going to butcher me for saying that because, look, I am not an engineer. However, from my understanding, Archer has a redundancy system on the midnight. Even if one of your rotors fail, you have the emergency backup of the others. And this will get you down in the event of an emergency landing. So they said they look forward to their continued collaboration with Archer across the ecosystem to responsibly explore how this new technology can be safely integrated into the region's broader transportation network and ensure the airports are ready to support safe and efficient operations. And I think that's one of the most important things when it comes to public adoption. We get an awful lot of people on the channel say they can't see the likes of electric air taxis working. And I think that is just... They are not even misinformed. They're just not informed on how good these are going to be. When you get the likes of the authorities coming out and saying they're going to make sure they're going to be responsible for the new technology where they'll be safely integrated into the region's broader transportation network, this will give the likes of anyone that doesn't know who Archer Aviation is that little bit of hope that this would not lead to a disaster like we've seen with numerous helicopter crashes in the US over the last year. But guys, before we watch what Adam has had to say, I want to say we're looking at a timeline for this. We know the Covington, Georgia factory is going to produce 10 to 15 this year. At full ramp up, we're looking at around 650 midnight aircraft per year. I've broke down why I'm a little bit sceptical about how they plan on getting thousands of air taxis over LA by 2028. But are they biting off more than they can chew at the moment, by saying they can get thousands of air taxis out in LA, by unveiling this, and by not only unveiling this, like, I can jump into it here. From what I can see here, there is eight vertiports. So, to get eight vertiports up and running, at minimum, you're going to have to have at least eight midnight aircraft being able to operate in these. And that would not be ideal because you don't want to just be running off eight midnight aircraft when you first open up. And you're going to wonder why I say only eight. Well, if we can produce 650 midnight per year by 2027 even, their biggest goal, as I've said, was get into the Olympics, get into the World Cup, get into the Super Bowl. They want to be in front of the eyes of the world so the whole world will want to fly in these aircraft. Now, this is why I can't really see this taking off until after 2028 because I feel like Los Angeles will be the priority. However, the fact that United have got behind this, it does make me a little bit more hopeful that maybe Los Angeles won't be as big of a priority and they will be going after the likes of New York because we've seen 150 million passengers per year be coming in and out of them airports. But we don't only have to worry about that. We then have the Android partnership for the hybrid VTOLs and this is going to take up space in the Covington, Georgia factory. We then also have Ethiopia Airlines. And then we also have Abu Dhabi. So are they just stretching themselves a little bit too far at the very start? Sometimes I think I would prefer to see them roll out the likes of New York, get that over the line, roll out the likes of Los Angeles, get that over the line. 
instead of slowly trickling them out everywhere. Why not go in and just dominate there once you're in there? But then, are they trying to get this out before the likes of Joby can get any deals done? I do think Joby also planned to be running in New York, so it will be very interesting to see how that plays out. At the moment, the charging stations will be a little bit different, and that's how I don't know how the vertiports are going to adapt to having the S4 coming in. There must be a little bit of a deal to be done there. I know you're going to say it's not going to cost them that much to change the charging networks. However, if they're running at the likes of a vertiport and Archer wants to get into this in a big way, will there be room for the S4 to come in? And that could be what Archer is thinking. However, I've gone on a little bit of a tangent, so let's jump across and see what Adam has had to say in all of this. Today we announced our New York route network where we will be really trying to execute on the home to airport trips, really focusing on um, nine core locations, the large international airports, JFK, LaGuardia. And I was wrong there. It's nine, not eight. Yeah, Newark the big heliports located in Manhattan, west side, east side, in the downtown Skyport, and then also the big regionals, uh, Teterboro, um, Westchester, and Long Island. Adam, we need to reflect on the, the tragic events of last week, right, of a, of a helicopter that crashed in New York City into the, to, to the Hudson. I, I bring that back with the context. I've spent a lot of time with Archer Aviation, right, and one of the pitches that you have is that the technology relies in parts on pre-certified components. In other words, the FAA knows these components because they... So as we said there, there's a redundancy system on these. It's not like a helicopter. But I'm interested to see how Adam actually steers this conversation away from this because I feel like when there's fear in the industry, we had the likes of Boeing and their problems with the likes of the aircraft doors. And then you had every man and his dog saying, what if this happens? What if that happens with the likes of Airbus? So let's see how Adam answers this. They're more commonplace in other aircraft, but those watching want to know the safety confidence that you have. How does the, the Midnight compare to, a, to a, a, a normal helicopter? And what redundancies have you put in place to make it safe? So these aircraft are powered by an electric powertrain. And that's really the key new technology that enables this new level of redundancy that we haven't seen before with vertical lift aircraft. And so the Midnight aircraft has 12 electric engines. It has a big wing and it has redundancy built into the entire system that enables a very, very safe flight. And that's the type of safety that cannot be offered today with helicopters. So this is something that we're aligned with not only the FAA, but really uh, the future of aviation to keep bringing and keep innovating in the aviation industry to make products safer and safer. So then jumping away from that, this is the exact delivery United have supplied Archer with. And don't you think the Midnight looks amazing with this? But I have one question for you as well is, do you prefer the Black Midnight or are you happy when you see the livery of United on it? But then you're going to wonder how much it will be to fly in one of these to each of your nine locations. Well, I've done a video breaking down the exact dollar amount it will be per seat to fly an Archer Aviation and how much money Archer Aviation will make per flight. So make sure to check out that video next. 